This... This is a bad idea. <laughs> Now, if you don't know, we've been doing live streams on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash magikarp, usefly, lol, go there now, where we've been doing live battle reports of 40k for some of the armies that we've been working on and some painting streams. That's twitch.tv forward slash magikarp, usefly, lol, for painting streams on Wednesdays at 1pm and live battle reports on Saturdays at 1pm Pacific Standard Time. Now, playing the games on stream is fun, and so far we've been having a great time. Unfortunately, when it comes to playing the game in content form, you've got to play with painted models just because it does look better. And with 9th edition out, that changed up a lot of our armies. And so I've had to not only buy a bunch of new units, I've also got to paint them all too. And that's what's going on with this video. Today, I'll be doing an overview of painting an entire Warhammer 40k army in the span of a week, as well as add in tips for new people getting into the hobby and all the problems I had doing it. And since we're talking about painting, that's where today's sponsor comes in, Raycon. Raycon is an audio electronic company that specializes in earbuds that are worn by celebrities like Snoop Dogg. Now, I love Raycon's everyday E25 wireless earbuds and use them on an almost daily basis when doing chores around the house. I especially love them when painting miniatures since I can just pop them in and listen to my favorite podcast for hours to focus on doing really bad paint jobs. Plus, they're super affordable and come with a bunch of different color options to customize the earbuds to your choosing and come with this really sick charging case that can charge your earbuds up to four times on the go. And it comes with a bunch of different fit options that you can choose from to make sure that they fit comfortably inside of your ear. They hold really well, and best of all, you can get them at an even lower price when you visit buyraycon.com forward slash magikarp and get 15% off your order today. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video, and let's get on with the painting. Okay, so first off, we're building some spicy Tyranids because they're just my ride and die faction. I mean, yeah, they kind of suck in 9th edition, but hey, I still love the hell out of them, but because of the changes and how seriously we're taking this hobby in order to show them on camera, I have to paint an entirely new army. So we're looking to paint every model and base them so we can show it on camera. Now, if you're a veteran painter, you might enjoy watching a new painter suck absolute shit while he does a rushed paint job. And if you're new to the hobby, I'll be adding in some nice tips and tricks to help you get started. So even if you don't have a creative bone in your body or you're afraid to get started with painting, I'll help you out so then you can get started and not feel like, uh, you, you know, you, you have to be the best. Compare your paint job to my shitty paint job. That's the point of this video. Because remember, when you're painting, it's all about you and how you feel. This is a hobby, so you do whatever makes you feel happy, and no matter what anyone says, these are your minis and your story to tell. So, with that in mind, let's set this up. For this project, we're painting 18 Tyranid Warriors, 2 Tyranid Primes, 5 Biovores, 4 Pyrovores, 1 Malaceptor, 1 Malanthrope, and 45 Spore Mines. I'm proxying the Pyrovores as Biovores since they're pretty much the same build and height, but the main reason is because GW is sold out of a lot of models. There aren't any Biovores in their store, and so I had to buy all of them off of eBay, and when the Pyrovores came back, I purchased 4 of them. I also bought the Mal scepter on ebay as well even though it, it came back on on on, on the on, on the website so fuck you games workshop <laughs> also for the pyrovores their tails are pretty hard to glue on and so i just use some good old-fashioned green stuff to give them little tail stubs for an easy conversion. Luckily for the rest of the army, I already painted my Ripper Swarms as well as my Hive Guard and Neurothrope. Not base, but we're going to try and fix that this week. I've also already built all the models, so that's going to cut my time by a lot. The only model that I do have to build is my first Forge World model, the Malanthrope. So in total, we're looking at painting about 76 models, which is a pretty damn big task, especially since I don't really have a lot of time to paint everything. Fuck me, right? Let's get started. I'll be doing a lot of my painting at the office, so we're first going to transfer all the models over and build the Malanthrope. Once there, we've got to get started by priming every model that we can. Before you do any painting for a miniature, you have to prime your model so that the paint sticks. You can't just build the model and start painting on it right away because the paint will chip and will just overall look even more ugly than what you think it's going to look like for someone who sucks at painting. Normally, you can use pretty much any priming aerosol can as long as it says on the bottle that it sticks to plastic. 
Citadel makes some fast drying rattlers that I like to use if I'm in a hurry and they also have a bunch of color options. Now I mostly enjoy these when I want to paint right away but if you can wait for about an hour or so for the paint to dry then I suggest going with a different option since Citadel rattlers can get pretty expensive. Since I already have a color scheme for my army where the base color is a majority white, we'll be using the Rust-Oleum white primer. Not only will we be priming our models but we'll also cut down on time by having it be a color that we'll be implementing to our color scheme. To begin priming you'll need a couple of things, a box, double-sided tape, and a mask to make sure you're not breathing in the toxic fumes from the aerosol can. Rip apart the box so you have this one long piece of cardboard and then add in some double-sided tape to stick your miniatures on. After you're done, you're ready to prime. So we're going to go outside and prime our models in the hot Californian sun. You want to prime during the day when there's not a lot of humidity so your primer can stick and spray your models from about an arm distance away. You're looking to have the paint apply in a light coat and dry pretty quickly so don't go up to the model and spray it at point blank or else you'll you know you'll, you'll lose out on a lot of details in the plastic this is a big no-no so don't do it but for shits and giggles here's a model being sprayed at point blank <laughs> Now, I have a lot of models to paint and I don't have time for it all to dry, so instead of using an aerosol can, I'm using an airbrush for priming instead. In my opinion, priming with an airbrush is a lot quicker and you also get a lot more coverage since you can control where the primer is going a lot more easily. Plus it dries super quickly so you can prime and paint pretty fast. For my priming, I used to use a Spar Max Flyer SR, but I hated it. So instead I went to Hobby Lobby and picked up an Owada airbrush and a 0.5 millimeter needle. That way we won't have to thin our primer for the standard 0.35 millimeter needles. First we're going to prime all of our models in Vallejo's gray primer. I don't have a white primer on me, so we're just going to use this and then spray it with a white base coat once we're done. Also, just for the people out there, I'm using this airbrush in a well-ventilated area to make sure I keep my fat Asian boy body healthy. And now that they look all nice and primed, it's time to build our Malanthrope. Now, I've never built a Forge World model before, so I was super excited. But after opening the package, I realized that this is fucking awful. I'm already not a big fan of resin models, but to add on top of that, that there aren't really any instructions i am not a big fan of forge world for a model worth 90 dollars you think that they would add something but there's really not a lot for working with any kind of resin you'll want to get some water and dunk them in there with some dish soap and clean off each piece with an old toothbrush that way you can get rid of any of the nasty gunk on the model. The base it comes with is pretty shitty and on top of that the model came in warped so I had to file down bend and cut off some pieces just so it could fit together. All in all, fuck Forge World. Monday, we spent a majority of our time building the Malanthrope and priming all of our models. We're a tad bit behind, so today we went straight into finishing our base coats. The paints we're using are mostly from Vallejo. I'm not a big fan of Citadel paints since they're in buckets, so instead I opt to use Vallejo instead because the droppers are a lot easier to use. For our scheme, we want to use as little paint as possible since I'm working on a horde army that contains a lot of models. Initially, I could have used some contrast paints to make the paint job easier, but I couldn't find a good color that I enjoyed, so instead we're using flat blue from Vallejo to color the carapace, moot green for some small details, an Andrea blue for the guns, and using voluptuous pink for the exposed flesh on the Tyranid models. Now, I'm not the best painter in the world. In fact, I'm at most slightly mediocre, but that doesn't mean I can't make decently good models. Especially since it's a horde army, I can get away with them not being the best painted models, and if you're just going by the five foot rule, then you're totally fine. Meaning that as long as the model looks fine from 5 feet away, you're good to go. As for applying our paints, we're using a wet palette I got off of Amazon for like 10 bucks. Normally they come with this thick parchment paper, but that's something that you don't want to use. Instead, just toss this shit away and use some good old fashioned Reynolds parchment paper. You can pick this up at the store for about $5 and it'll last you for an extremely long time. Just cut the paper to the dimension you want and bada bing bada boom, you're good to go. For my brushes, we're just using some hobby brushes from any hobby store near you. I've been using these cheap brushes for a long time and they work. They're synthetic bristles and even when I clean them after every use using the master's brush paint cleaners, they always end up curling at the tip or eventually fraying out after about a month's worth of painting. So being sick of it, I ended up talking to the guys at Spiky Bits and they pointed me to Monument Hobbies where I picked up some of their sets of bomb wick brushes. From what they said, they're pretty much Windsor and Newton Sable brushes but at a competitive price. So I ordered those and hopefully they should come in soon and I can let you guys know how I feel about them when they come in. But for now, we're using these synthetic brushes 
ashes instead. Now, the reason why I'm tackling the warriors first is because they are my troops, which means they're usually the hardest to paint quickly. Troops take up a bunch of time since they're all small infantry and you have to have so many different paints to put on. So to get the hardest part out of the way, I'm painting these models first and then moving on to the bigger models since they'll end up taking less time for me. And in order to make our brushes last for as long as possible and to make sure we're not letting our paints dry out, we're painting in an assembly line by applying one color to every model and then moving on to the next. We don't have to be super accurate when painting since we can just go over every imperfection at the end. A majority of Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday consisted of me just painting my troops in an assembly line. I, I kind of wish I sectioned off the warriors and painted things separately so then I can get in the small tiny spaces of the models, but I knew that if I did, I'd be spending even more time on them. So instead, I just decided to ignore it and do my best. Remember that these are troops, so you shouldn't spend more time than you need to on the models. Moving on to Thursday, I still had a lot of models left that I needed to paint. The Biome Pyrovores, the Malaceptor, the Malanthrope, and of course, all of these spore mines. The spore mines won't be that big of a deal since I'm planning on just using some contrast paints on them, but everything else will still take a decent amount of time. So for Thursday and Friday, I ended up working on the Biovores and Malaceptor next. For this, I had no idea how I was going to paint them, so I just went with my gut feeling and painted the carapace first. Also, I recorded myself painting all of these guys, but when I got home to transfer the footage, my SD card fell on the ground and my dog chomped on it, so blame him for there not being any footage of me painting these guys and the Malaceptor. Scepter. But don't get too mad at him because, you know, he's still a cutie. Regardless, I was fairly happy with how the Biovores came out and I was super happy with the Malaceptor. I used the Voluptuous Pink for the brain, which I love, and it gives the model a little bit more of a pop. The green for exposed skin also adds a nice accent. It's a simple design, but the most effective simple design I could think of to meet in the middle for quantity and quality. Saturday, I spent a majority of the time working on the Malanthrope and putting the finishing touches on the Malaceptor. This was also the last day that I had to paint everything since I have to stream the army on Sunday. The Malanthrope proved to be actually super easy to paint, although the paint did seem weird since the resin was a little bit bumpy and coarse, I was able to do a decent job on it. In all, I still really don't like Forge World. I used the Voluptuous Pink and the same orange shade for the Biovores to cut down on time. I feel like this is where contrast paints shine, since they're super wet, they can get into small crevices and make the paint job look a lot better without it looking flat. It just gives the model a little bit more depth, and so I enjoy at least this color a lot. I also ended up using an Apothecary White contrast paint for the exoskeleton, just so then I don't have to wash the white part of the model and can give it more depth, because usually when I do a wash on white, it ends up looking a lot more dirty than I would want. And with that, I finished painting the Malceptor and moved on to the Spore Mines. For these guys, I primed them with the Vallejo Gray Surface Primer and then hit them with the same voluptuous pink contrast paint and some ultramarine blue on the top. These guys are tiny and I didn't want to waste time painting them. Plus, no one's going to care what they really look like, so I just did them as quickly as possible. Now, with only a couple hours left to go, I decided to dry brush, wash my models, and start basing. For my scheme, I did dry brushing pretty weird. I knew that I wanted these models to be on a snow-like base to make it feel like that they're inhabiting a planet with freezing temperatures, and so I dry brushed them white and wasn't afraid if the dry brushing gave them white marks on the carapace and guns. Usually dry brushing and highlighting your model is a lot like adding a drop shadow to text. You don't notice it until you're looking for it, but for this one, I didn't really mind if you did notice. For the wash, I'm just using some Nuln oil on the carapace and also the white exoskeleton, but making sure it's a pretty light wash on the white. I don't normally use known oil, but I want to try it for this project. Most of the time, I just use some Army Painter Strong Tone for the wash that I dilute with spirit minerals, but I didn't want to do that for this. I tried making sure I got the wash into the deep crevices of the model to give it more shadows, but I also didn't have enough time to get them all washed perfectly while also waiting for them to dry. So I washed one model from each unit, hit them with a Testor matte varnish to get rid of any gloss, and went on to base them. For the snowy base, I ended up using some PVA glue, baking powder, and a bit of white paint. I mixed the three together until I got a consistency that I liked, not too smooth and not too chunky. I then used some army painter base decorations on the base of the models. We used some dead grass tufts and some of their corkscrew rocks to super glue onto the base and then cover the rest up with a snow concoction that I made. Also, make sure that you use 
baking soda and not baking powder. If you use baking powder, it's going to yellow and look a little bit nasty after a while. Baking soda with some white paint and some PVA glue, you're gonna be completely fine. Using a popsicle stick, I dropped the snow onto the base and used a brush that I didn't care about to then push the snow around in order to cover up the entire base. After that, I hit the rim of each model with an Abaddon black around the rim. I did this for as many models as I could and ended up leaving the office at about one in the morning to get ready for the stream. So for painting for an entire week, I ended up finishing the army, but unfortunately not being able to finish the basing, which made me a bit sad. Still, I was able to get a lot done and was fairly happy with the results. I was especially happy with the Malceptor and the Biovores. Even the Mountainthrope ended up looking okay. In general, I've ended up painting about 6,000 points of Tyranid models, and even though they're not all based, I can still be proud of what I've accomplished and honestly the collection looks super cool when they're all out on the table just don't get too close to them from what i learned painting this army i definitely need to stop using synthetic brushes if i'm going to be painting a lot of stuff i take care of them but they just always end up curling and fraying making my paint projects a lot harder i also want to use an airbrush more to help speed up the process of painting but I'm just not that great with it just yet. I ended up buying 1,000 points worth of Harlequins to start a new army and also got some stencils to use, so I'm pretty happy about that and can start painting that army once they come in the mail. I also picked up some really nice resin printed terrain off of an Etsy shop called Alt Reality Terrain for about 70 bucks that I'm excited to practice some of my airbrushing on, especially since terrain is a lot more forgiving. But that's it for this week's paint project. In all, I had a blast painting these models. I know I'm not the best, but I feel like I'm at least getting a tad bit better and more efficient with my paint jobs. I'm not trying to be the greatest painter in the world, but if I can make acceptable models, I'm more than happy happy to keep going and improving as time goes on. But what are some of the paint jobs that you're proud of? What projects are you working on now? Do you enjoy painting and why? Leave a comment below and let me know. And if you join the Carp Crew Discord, post your paint jobs in the 40k painters chat and every Wednesday at 1pm at twitch.tv forward slash magic fly lol, I'll be taking a look at some of your painting projects to help us all keep our sanity while COVID is running amok. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. And if you want to see more painting projects from a shitty painter to make yourself feel a little bit better, let me know. Anyways, that's it for today. And I'll talk to you guys next time with another video. Oh, bye bye Squeeze.